For over 25 years, one of the most successful programs on television was a show called Hee Haw. Well, did you know that no one has ever gotten together all the cast members of that great show for a big old reunion? We thought it was high time that happened. So Country's Family Reunion decided to throw a big celebration for all the cast members of that great show. Set up some cameras, film it all for you. And everybody wanted to come from Roy Clark to Gordy Tapp, George Lindsay to Lulu Roman, Buddy Allen Owens to Buck Trent. They all wanted to be a part of this reunion. We call it Country's Family Reunion Salute to the Cornfield, hosted by Bill Anderson. The stories are hilarious. The music, unforgettable. And the memories, they'll last a lifetime. The front porch is waiting, so grab a glass of your favorite iced tea and enjoy the memories as we present Country's Family Reunion Salute to the Cornfield. to all of our family reunions, but I think we've been looking forward to this one about as much or more than any other. With all the gang from the cornfield that we all grew up watching and loving, and it is so wonderful of everybody to be here today. This is really going to be fun. How many times have you heard that theme song? Not counting just now? Yeah. Uh, I have not stopped. Yeah, I have not stopped to count, but it's uh, the second most popular thing that's ever happened in my life. The <laughs> most important being? I can't remember. <laughs> no, it, how many times I've heard, I, I have not the slightest idea. A bunch. It, but you were on Hee Haw from the very beginning, right? Even before the beginning, I was a guest on the uh, Jonathan Winter show. And Frank Pepiot and John Ellsworth came to me and uh, with this uh, idea of, of doing a, uh, a show not unlike uh, Laugh-In. And uh, would I be interested? And that was in the fall of 1968. And, you know, you say yes to everything in this business because a lot of it doesn't ever come to pass. And uh, in January of uh, 1969, my, wi my wife, she wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> my manager. <laughs> that could have been your wife. I was going to say, <laughs> that they have a lot in common, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, he, he called and said, uh, they're getting ready to do that show. My manager called. And I said, uh, what show is that? He said, they're calling it Hee Haw. I said, they're calling what Hee Haw? <laughs> they said, well, that's just a working title. By the time the show uh, gets on the air, uh, they'll come up with a much more clever name. Right. <laughs> so you think back on it and say, what could be more clever than Hee Haw? They could have called it the Roy Clark Show. I doubt if we'd be sitting here today <laughs> celebrating the longevity. Yeah. You know. How long has it been since you've seen some of these folks? Hmm. Boy, I don't know. It's been, uh, it's probably been five years or so since the last that I saw. Before that was like 20 years. Before that was, you know, we've been doing this a long time. Yeah. yeah. We were in production. I've heard so many different uh, time periods, but uh, we, were, we were on uh, in production over 25 years. But then we did another segment called Hee Haw Silver which they went back and took different parts out of different shows and made a new season. So actually, we've been more like 27 years in production. 
But there were few times, really, when, like, everybody was together. Because you filmed the show a lot of times in segments. You'd go in and do a certain segment or a song. But for everybody uh, to be gathered, uh, you, you, you didn't always do that, did you? So we didn't have room, really. So the, what they tried to do was to get um, uh, as many people in at a given time uh, that we could do it and not have everybody. We were using the men's room for the... That's right. Well, no, there's another version. <laughs> <laughs> we were using that as the men's dressing room, and the ladies' room was the ladies' dressing room. That's how cramped we were for space. So as few of people that we could have at a given time, the better off it was for everyone working the sets and and getting everybody in each other's way. Well, when they put the show together, there was a feeling that you just knew the minute you saw it that it was going to be successful. And one of the most successful things on the show was a segment that you did with the late and great Buck Owens where you all did a little picking and grinning. You got another Buck sitting over there next to you who... Uh, yeah. <laughs> was on hee haul for a long time. Could could you guys? Could Roy Clark and Buck Trent? Could y'all yeah. reprise a little bit of the uh, of the picking and grinning segment to really get us in the hee haul mood? We probably could, but uh, I don't know if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just oh, teasing. Yeah. Cause we oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah we did uh, this years and years ago. Oh boy. Yeah. You know, I haven't played a banjo since the last time yeah. well. that I played. <laughs> I know it. Well, I think you're fixing to lay one on you there. I know it. No, of course, when you and Buck Owens did this, uh, Buck played guitar and you played yes, banjo. Did. But uh, Buck Trent's got, we're going to do a, a, a dueling banjo thing here. The way that it was originally written. Uh, was it originally written for banjos? There's Two no banjos. Oh, was it? Yeah. yeah. By Arthur Smith. Oh, uh, he's talking about the dueling now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, feeding banjos. Yeah. You want to strap around here? Or you, is he good enough? You got it? <laughs> you got her? Yeah. I knew he was gonna do that. I just had it. <laughs> I just, I just, I did. Wait, golly, you remember that? <laughs> you man. So Boy. much like he, I was watching Kathy Baker over there just stomping those feet. <laughs> it felt like home. It felt like home. Yeah, well, it is yeah, home. I do have to say that Buck and I worked together out on the road. And, uh, you know, the world knows that he played for years with Porter Wagner. Well, he was really part of Porter's band. But we were in Las Vegas one night, 
And uh, I just, uh, midway through the show, I just said, uh, it's yours. And he said, what? I said, it's your show. And that started his solo career. You're talking about Buck Trent? Buck Trent. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. he ran off and left me. <laughs> I had to do something. So I just said, oh, yeah. <laughs> when you look across this room, right over there to the other side, do you almost feel like you're looking at Buck Owens? Oh, his son? I know. It. You know, it, it is something, man. Some, some uh, kids don't look like their dad, but, man, he does, don't he? <laughs> Buddy Allen, Buddy Allen Owens. I, I think you're, you're probably a little taller than Buck, aren't you? I'm uh, about 6'4", and he was uh, a little under 6'2". Yeah. yeah, so a couple inches. So growing up as, as Buck's son and, and being around him in the hee-haw days and everything, what, what kind of an impression did hee-haw make on you? Did you, did you uh, go to school and brag about your daddy being on hee-haw? Well, at, at first, I, to be really honest with you, I was, uh, I was uh, just out of high school, and I was a rock and roller, and I didn't like country music that much. <laughs> <laughs> but when I found out, you know, all my friends started coming up saying, that, that show's pretty cool, you know, that's, that's a lot of fun. And all of a sudden I thought, well, maybe I better really watch this thing, you know. <laughs> and, and then uh, that was about the time I, I got a country music uh, uh, recording contract and I was really uh, starting to get into country music and really get influenced by several people. And Hee Haw just brought into my life uh, uh, and I think a lot of other people's lives uh, the exposure to to country artists and country music in general, and it gave chances, I think, for uh, people to gather their family around the TV on Sunday or Saturday night, whichever night it was, and uh, and and that was their time together. And that really that made a big impression on me when people would tell me how special uh, Hee Haw has always been to them, even still. It still is a, a big part of a lot of people's lives, but especially back then, it was a uh, it was a chance for, for family time, and that, well, that was Did you cool. appear on the show a lot when your dad was on it? I was on, uh, at first I was kind of a, a, a lucky enough to be a guest artist, uh, and so I was on just, um, I would say, you know, two or three times a year for the first four or five years. And, and then uh, after uh, a while, I was able to be on it a little bit more. He brought me in, and, and, uh, and I did uh, some duets and things with him, and, and, uh, and that, was, that was really a lot of fun for me. And then a little later on, uh, after Don passed away, his, uh, his uh, band leader passed away, uh, uh, the, the band sort of changed uh, personnel, if you will, and so I was able to come in, and, and uh, for almost eight years, I, I kind of was a member of the band, and any time uh, Dad was around uh, or any of their songs, and some of the other artists that came in, we were lucky enough to to back them up as well, which was uh, always a lot of fun for me. I just remember great things. Was there any disadvantage in being Buck Owens' son and being in the music business? Disadvantage? Yeah, uh, advantages and disadvantages. Well, what I, were they? You know, I I don't know if there was any disadvantage really to, uh, you know, it was a little. Tough, I think, at first, because I think a lot of people knew I was, but I decided, uh, and my mom and my dad, who were both recording artists, uh, they kind of threw out the idea at me that, that maybe you want to try to make a name for yourself. And so Alan was my, is my first name, and so Buddy is a name I've always gone by ever since I was a year old. My grandfather gave me that name. And so uh, we just picked out the name Buddy Allen, and I uh, recorded uh, on Capitol Records for quite a long time with that, and and uh, and I was I was glad I did because uh, when people did find out uh, that the Buck was my father, I think it uh, uh, kind of gave them a, a, you know a little sense of respect for me and for what I was trying to do. You know, my career was moderate probably at, at best, but uh, I always enjoyed uh, going out there and, and singing for people and and uh, singing Buck songs and and uh, and just talking to people and just being a part of, uh, of, of his legacy and my mom's legacy and, and just being a part of the music business. Could we get you to get your guitar and come up here with the band and sure. do a little medley of your dad's sure. big songs? Should I come up there? Yeah, come All on right. up here. Yeah. While Buddy's doing that, what, what, what do you, what's your favorite member? What, what do you think of when you think of Buck Owens? Buck Owens, Buck and I had known each other for several years before Hee Haw came along. 
back when they had the uh, the uh, what am I trying to say? It's easy for you to listen. <laughs> uh, when we had the tours, yeah. and uh, I, I was always paired with Buck. Uh, in fact, Buck had one of the first uh, RVs that traveled with the whole band traveled in it, and he, he invited me to uh, ride along in his um, RV. So we got to know each other before uh, Hee Haw came along. So I already had a preconceived um, friendship with Buck before he uh, happened. In fact, I think they went to Buck uh, and then they came to me and hit us both with the same proposal. And, uh, and I said, well, if Buck will do it, I'll do it. And hopefully he said, if Roy does it, I'll do it. <laughs> However, both of us said, okay. Yeah, well, it was more than okay for a whole lot of years. Now, weren't weren't you playing uh, uh, in a lot of uh, a lot around the Washington D.C. area or something at at the time when you guys met, you and Dad, uh, Jimmy and Dean? So, well, I guess we met then, but got to know each other was a little later. Yeah, that's when we did like the Hap People's tours, and uh, we'd go out for like two weeks at a time, mm -hmm. and that is when we, would, between shows, had a chance to get to know each other. Yeah, we had met in Washington or in that area yeah. when I was with Jimmy Dean. But well, he, to get to he, to used to, he used to tell, I, I remember he and Don talking about this guy that is a heck of a musician, but he's even a funnier guy. <laughs> and um, and it, it turned out to be you, and then later on it was just so ironic that, that uh, it, all this happened. And uh, the, you guys got together on, on the show. Yeah. It's great. It is. Uh, the way that it, Hee Haw really just happened. It happened in a lot of areas. Mm -hmm. Buck and I getting to know each other. And if you look back on it, I don't think any pairing uh, of two people, uh, of cast members, of the name Hee Haw, nothing could have been changed to uh, that would improve. In fact, would probably uh, not add anything to the show, the way that it happened. It just sort of, uh, like the first day on the set when we got ready to tape the first show, uh, Buck and I looked at one another and said, oh, are you here too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so I felt a little more secure. <laughs> that well, that he felt it was good enough that he wanted to be part of. There was a lot of magic, I'll tell you that. Sure was. How about some magic from some of your dad's songs? All right, um, I, I'll do uh, three or four. The guys were nice enough to work these up, and uh, these are some of my dad's earlier songs. All right. <clears throat> They're gonna put me in the movies. They're gonna make a big star out of me. We'll make a film about a man that's sad and lonely All I gotta do is act naturally Well, I'll bet you I'm gonna be a big star I might win an Oscar, you can't ever tell Movies are gonna make me a big star I can play the part so well And I don't know that you're gonna plainly see The biggest fool that ever hit the big time All I gotta do is act naturally There's another one Together again My tears have stopped falling You're back in my arms Now where you belong The key to my heart You hold
about 1965. I've got a tiger by the tail, it's plain to see. I won't be much when you get through with me. I'm losing weight and turning mighty pale. It looks like I've got a tiger by the tail. I thought the day I met you, you were big as a plan. Just the kind to fit my dreams and plans. Now the piece of we're living takes the wind from my sails. It looks like I've got a tiger by the tail. I've got a tiger by the tail, it's plain to see. I won't be much when you get through with me. I'm losing weight and turning mighty pale. When it looks like I've got a tiger by the tail. Oh, yes, it looks like I've got a tiger by the tail. Now, I want to do one more song, if I could, of his. Now, for a long time, about, uh, he quit recording, really somewhere around 1980 or so, 80, 81, and uh, just had no interest in it after, really after uh, Don Rich passed away, his band leader who he was friends with for many, many years, got a, um, quite honestly, just lost, uh, you know, any interest in, in, uh, in recording. Well, it was about 1988 or 89 or so, uh, a guy called him on the phone and said, Buck, my name's Dwight Yoakam. And he said, I want, you've always been a hero of mine. I want to come by your office and see you in Bakersfield there. And so what happened was uh, that afternoon on Friday, Dwight came up to the office, and, and it was going to be about a 10-minute meeting and end up being about three hours because they instantly hit it off. They found out that they had a lot of things in common. They, you know, both pretty funny guys, like the same kind of music. And from that time on, Dwight and my dad became pretty good friends. Well, I kind of fired dad up to, to really kind of get back into to music a little bit. My dad told Dwight one day, he said, Dwight, I got this song that I recorded on an old album about 15 years ago. I think you ought to think about recording it. Listen to it. And Dwight said, all right, give me a copy of it. So we got him a copy of this old album. And Dwight said, you know what, Buck? I do like that song. But the only way I'm going to record that song is if you'll sing on it with me. So Dwight... And my dad did a, did a duet of this song. And uh, funny things happened, you know. Dwight had never had a number one song. This became a number one country song, and it won a Grammy for him. That was pretty funny also. A pretty, pretty cool little song about the, the town that he spent about the last, oh gosh, 55 years of his life in. A place called Bakersfield, California. It's called The Streets of Bakersfield. Here we go. Go ahead. something I couldn't find anywhere else Hey, I'm not trying to be nobody I just want a chance to be myself I've been a thousand miles of thumbing I've worn blisters on my heels Trying to find me something better on the streets of Bakersfield You don't know me but you don't like me You say you care less how I feel How many of you that sit and judge me Never walk the streets of Bakersfield Francisco Spent the night there in the can Hey, put this drunk man in my jail cell I took $15 from the man Left him my watch and my old house key I don't want folks thinking that I had steal And I thanked him as I was leaving and headed down to Bakersfield You don't know me, but you don't like me You 
Say you care less how I feel How many of you that sit and judge me Ever walk the streets of Bakersfield How many of you that sit and judge me Ever walk the streets of Bakersfield Buddy Allen, Buddy Allen Owen. Talking about the music and the comedy, if there was if there was one person, of course there were several, but but one that really bridged the gap because I mean he could open his mouth and we'd all laugh, and then of course he would play and sing and and we would marvel at that. And he married way above himself, and his <laughs> widow is. Former wife, Ramona Jones, is here. She was married to our buddy, Grandpa Jones, for many, many years. Ramona, you look wonderful, honey. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Was Grandpa as funny at home as he was everywhere else? Well, he was funny, uh, but he had a, a more of a serious side, too, sometimes. But he was funny at home, especially when he got with String Bean, you know. And we lived close together, and he and String... Uh, had some funny stories, I'll tell you they did. <laughs> we all have, we all tell Grandpa Jones stories. I know. You know, it used to be at the opera, it would be like, you heard any new grand, in fact, Grandpa came up to me one night. He said, have you heard any new Grandpa stories? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Bill, one time uh, I went shopping with uh, String Bean and Grandpa, and they were going to go buy some costume shirts for Hee Haw, you know, <laughs> and uh, on the way home, uh, String Bean said, uh, I'm afraid old Hee Haw is going to go off the air and we're going to be stuck with all these big collared shirts. <laughs> 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 they were fun when they got together, at least. How many years were you and Grandpa married? We were married 54 years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Now, you, have, uh, you have, have married again. You're married to a minister, I think, now. Is I right? am now. Um, I live by myself... Uh, well, about four and a half years, and I decided that was for the birds. So, I, <laughs> so I, I married a preacher, and we're very happy. Well, it Jan must be agreeing with you because you just look wonderful. Thank you. You and I go back so far to the old television we do, shows don't we, we did over on in the Opry, Charlotte, sure. North Carolina, and the right. And oh, the that's Opry. right. We were on your show in North Carolina. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Gordy. Billy, I want to tell you the best grandpa story I know, <laughs> and Ramona's going to back it up. They had a dog that kept getting out under the fence. And Grandpa had a, quite a temper, and he was annoyed, and he got a stick, and he just beat the heck out of that dog. <laughs> and Ramona said to him, you know, Grandpa, that dog's only, get out, only going to get under that fence again. And Grandpa said, not till the swelling goes down. <laughs> 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 oh, it was Ramona, I got to ask you this. Is there any truth to the story? It was kind of a legendary grandpa, you and grandpa, when you had the bells and you used to do the bells. Oh, we did. And somebody took the clapper out of one of the bells one time. Did that really happen? I don't think so. You know, a lot of these stories have been added to and <laughs> until I hardly recognize them. I don't think that was really a, a real story. I don't think so. Well, at least I didn't know about it. <laughs> Grandpa, of course, on on Hee Haw, he was so well known for the uh, "What's for supper" yeah. line. Right. He didn't like people to come up asking that out on the road. Though, no, did he? he said he didn't know why that was ever funny, but he thought, <laughs> <laughs> but but he said um, it ended up being one of the most famous things he did on yeah. Hee Haw. You know, people yeah. liked it so much. Yeah, people would come up to him on the road and, and you know, hey, Grandpa, what's for what's supper? You know, yeah, became yeah. Such, a, such a trademark. Of course, you, you know, the beauty, if I may interject, uh, the beauty of Grandpa Jones and Ramona, I go back almost as far as Ramona with Grandpa. When I was 15 years old, I went out on a tour, a mini tour with them, and, uh, and we were driving the... the Best compliment I ever received was from Grandpa Jones. After we had played this uh, outdoor park and we were driving at night listening to uh, the Wheeling Jamboree. And uh, so I was sitting up front with uh, Grandpa was driving. Ramona was sitting in the back with Ernest Ferguson, who was uh, playing mandolin and did comedy. And uh, 
The only light in uh, the car was the, from the dash lights. And I was sitting there wondering how I had done, if I had passed the test that day, uh, and it was just silence, listening to the radio. And finally, uh, Ramona said, uh, Roy, you did real good today. And, uh, and Ernest Ferguson chimed in and said, yeah, you did real good. I'm a 15-year-old kid, first time away from home. And uh, Ramona said, uh, Grandpa said, Roy did uh, real good today, didn't he? And by the light of the dash, I saw the silhouette of Grandpa Jones saying, you did uncommonly well. <laughs> the biggest and best compliment I ever received. And then wound up working for over 25 years on Hee Haw together. I guarantee you in this room there's Grandpa stories. Oh. Who's, got, who's got one? Here's one. We're bound to. Uh, Gordon. We were, work, we were working out in uh, out west, way out. And uh, this old fellow came backstage and he wanted to talk to Grandpa. And Grandpa didn't want to be bothered with him. And the old fellow said, you, uh, you didn't bring your wife with you. Grandpa said, no, she had to be home. Well, he said, what was wrong with her? <laughs> well, Grandpa said, if you have to know, she's having a hysterectomy. <laughs> oh, he said, that can be bad. I had one of them one time. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, they were beautiful. They were beautiful. <laughs> one time, one time at, at the opera, a Vega banjo company had given Grandpa a banjo and me a banjo, new banjo. Just alike. The cases were just alike. So, banjo, uh, so Grandpa picks the banjo up and uh, puts it in his car. My banjo, right? So Hank Cochran sees him the next day at a, a Monument Studios. And, <laughs> and he said, <laughs> Hank says, uh, Grandpa, you got Buck's banjo. I, I, no, I ain't. No, 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 I ain't got it. He said, go out there and look at it. He said, I got it in the trunk. They went out there and Grandpa opened the trunk and opened it. Open the case of the banjo. It's my electric banjo with all that stuff on there, the pullers and the twisters and all this. And then he said, well, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> it takes three, Ger three uh, German scientists and 12 wise men to tune that thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Lou. Well, you know, everybody yeah. knew Grandpa had a temper, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they oh, all yeah. talked about that. Well, um, Charlie Leuven told me a story uh, after he had passed away, and I know he said this. <clears throat> Some of the things I, I hear, I know he didn't say, but <laughs> but I know he said this. They said, he, you know, at the opera you have lockers to keep your costumes and instruments in, and Grandpa's locker was down near the floor, you know, where he had to, <laughs> had to get on his knees to get things out of it. And they said one Saturday night, Charlie told me this, one Saturday evening, Grandpa was down on his knees getting things out of his locker and said... Uh, some fan came along and tapped him on the shoulder and said, Grandpa, how long were you on the Opry? And Grandpa said, well, I came here in 1946. Uh, you figure it out. <laughs> 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 I, I, know yeah. I know he said that. <laughs> I have one. I don't know whether I should tell it or not, but it's too funny to let lie. <laughs> okay, we was, playing, we was playing as fair date. And this little boy, he was a dirty little kid, you know, looked like me when I was a kid, dirty as could be. And he'd run out and say, what's for supper, Grandpa? And Grandpa said, well, and he went through the whole spill. Over and over, I think he went through about 10 times. He kept coming up to him. Every time you turn around, he'd run and get some cotton candy. Then he'd say, what's for supper, Grandpa? Then Grandpa... <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> he really did I, was yeah. I swear I couldn't help myself yeah. but he said fried motorcycles you little he <laughs> 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 really did well, I've got one, it was yeah, one. one. <laughs> we, when we did the Cole Haynes okay it was me and three men okay so I got to sit there and listen to all these men pick and play with each other okay and this was back kind of in the early part of Hee Haw in the first four or five years, okay? And Grandpa 
would kind of mumble things a little bit, you know. <laughs> Nobody would hear him, but I'd sit right next to him, so I'd hear him. So one day, I think it was Ganella, Misty, Barbie, and Mary Ann, okay, walked past to go to another set. He just kind of mumbled under his breath. He didn't think anybody heard it. And he said, I'll be. He said, if I looked that good walking, he said, I'd walk everywhere I went. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Larry? About what, Bill? <laughs> I figured you always thought something about everything, so I was just asking. Well, I do. I just don't have to say it. That's me. I've always been kind of shy and reticent about <laughs> voicing an opinion. I'll tell you what I think. Yeah. I'm having a great time. It's a good day. I really am. Yeah. It's a great, really day a great day seeing old friends. What, what do you think? Any, any particular name jump off that list that you might have a special oh, story good. about? Or? Well, I, you know, everybody's been telling junior samples. Uh, of course, Tennessee Ernie Ford, uh, you know, sang on the, at Friday night at the, at the Masters Golf Tournament in the Butler Cabin for years. You know, he loved golf. And he'd go down there. We joined him for that. Uh, wonderful man. Great storyteller. You know, that big voice. Well, incredible. i got to tell one junior story. And everybody has. And we all have stories about it. I was still the janitor. Remember when y'all did it? I, I was janitor slash prop man slash go get the coffee kid. Whatever it was for, for about a year, you know, while we, were, we had started recording for Fred Foster at Monument. But we hadn't had a hit. And we were still... Uh, you know, I was trying to make a living. Janice was a, part, it was a school teacher. So uh, got that job down there, and, and the, the gang would all come in. So one day, the people from the ACO Seed Company, you all remember that, A-C-C-O, they were going to do a commercial, and they hired Junior. And these cats came in from New York, and they got Junior in there, and, and it, was like, it was like, your crops will do better if you use ACO Seeds. They said, well, that's really good, Mr. Samuels, but it, it's... ACCO, A-C-C. -C. Your crops will do good if you use ACCO seed. <laughs> That's real good. That's really your, boy, you, we feel, but it's ACCO. Like echo, he said, ecker. I said, ACCO. He did it for an hour, and every time he did it, he'd say, your crops will do better with ACCO seed. <laughs> Finally, that old boy walked past me from New York. He said, pay the guy, and let's get the hell back to New York City. <laughs> I swear he did. I swear he did. One of the funniest things I ever He could not say echo. Well, that's a, that's a Georgia coming out in it. We, we put R's in things where sure. there are no sure. Where there are no R's. Yeah. Bill, I have one that there were great stories that always went on whenever we were waiting to go on camera and speaking about people who aren't with us anymore, the great Porter Wagner. Um, one day back in the room, he started telling Grandpa String Bean stories. And he, he said this was true, but he said that uh, Grandpa and String had invited him to go fishing. And he had agreed, and uh, he said he met them at the house at about a quarter of seven. They both got in the truck. Neither one said a thing. They'd, they couldn't hear all that well. Said they'd fish all day and never talk to each other. He said they fished right up until right about noon, and Porter said I was getting hot and I was hungry. And said I went... <coughs> Said Grandpa turned around and looked at him and said, Are you going to talk or fish, boy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know Ramona, if that's true. You or said not. you had a special place in your heart for the Hager twins. Well, I do. The Hagers, I loved both of them, and, and I learned to tell them apart. I could tell John <laughs> from Jim. But anyway, after they passed, after uh, Grandpa passed away, they would call me every Mother's Day, and in harmony, they would sing Happy Mother's Day to me. Oh. Oh, and, also, and also, they, they did that on my birthday. They sang happy birthday to me every year that they were living. So I really love the Hager twins. How sweet. 